Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice problem from Croatia. Now, let me tell you, this is not the original form of the problem, but I just changed it a little bit. So, we're going to go ahead and cross multiply first, and then that'll give us the original problem. Okay? So, let's go ahead and do that. One thing to be careful about is 3x plus 4 should not equal 0, and x plus 1 should not equal 0, which means x cannot equal negative 4 thirds and x cannot equal negative 1. So we kind of have to check these values at the end, but I don't think they're going to be an issue. Okay, let's go ahead and multiply both sides by this and then get rid of all the fractions and we're going to turn this into a polynomial because our numerator is a constant, so that should be fairly easy and then we're going to see how we can solve this problem. Okay? So, here's what we get after multiplication by the denominator, 6x plus 7 squared multiplied by 3x plus 4 multiplied by x plus 1 is equal to 6. Now, at this point, you may want to guess and check some solutions, but I think the nature of the problem kind of makes it a little harder because we have some um, non-monic linear expressions here with coefficients of x being different from 1, mainly. And then uh, that probably makes it a little harder because the answer might be a fraction, even an irrational number, which would be very hard to guess. Okay? So, here's what we're going to do. When you look at a problem like this, what are you thinking, right? The first thought is turn this into a quartic. Well, at, that's at least what I'm thinking for my first method, right? So, first method. This is going to be turned into a quartic equation. Let's do it. Expand 6x plus 7 squared. That's going to give you 36x squared plus 42 times 2 is 84x, and then plus 49, and then we're going to multiply it by this product, which is 3x squared, plus 3 plus 4, 7x, plus 4, equals 6, and then we're going to have to distribute, there's going to be a lot of terms, so bear with me, 108x to the fourth power, plus, okay, what, what is 36 times 7, 210 plus 42, that's a 252, that's how I usually do it, and that's going to be an x cubed, and then that's going to be 144x squared, and we're going to multiply 84 by 3, 240 plus 12, and that's going to be a 252 again. Hmm, that's interesting, if I didn't make any mistakes, right? <laughs> okay, uh, and then we're going to get 84 times 7, well, that's a 560 plus 28, that should be 588x squared. This should be an x cubed, by the way, right? I think this should be an x cubed, because I multiply these two, right? And then those two, and then plus... 84 times 4 is going to be 336x. And finally, I'm going to multiply the 49. 49 times 3 is going to be 147. 147, what am I multiplying? Okay, I'm multiplying this way. Uh, 147x squared. And then I'm going to multiply this way. 343. I think that's 7 to the third power, by the way. And then 49 times 4 is just going to be 196, right? 2 times 98. Okay. I hope I didn't make any mistakes, and this is equal to 6. Okay, great. Even if I had made a mistake, it wouldn't matter, because you'll see in a little bit. So 108x to the fourth power. This is like, interesting, right? We're getting the same type of x cubed twice. So it's going to be like a 504x to the third. And I have the x squared, like there is three terms. 588, 147, and 144. Okay, I'm just going to add them like this. I don't think... I can do a shortcut on those, so it's going to get a 19, and then we're going to get a 16, 17, and then uh, 5 plus 3 is 8. Okay, 879, I hope I didn't make a mistake either, not very good at arithmetic, but that should be the x squared, and finally on x I have the sum of these two numbers, that should be, that shouldn't be too hard, 679, right? 679x. And finally, I got 196, but I'm going to subtract 6 from it, so that's going to be plus 190 equals 0. Okay? So that's my equation, and that's a quartic, and numbers are pretty, pretty large. So solving this would be a headache, don't you think? That's going to be painful. You can use Wolfram Alpha. Obviously, that's going to be a lot easier. And uh, there's a quartic formula, which I don't think you want to use for this, because the, even the quartic formula for basic, uh, simple quartics is horrible. So... Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, having appreciated the, you know, complexity of the first method, and let's go into the second method. So the second method, obviously, is uh, going to tell you that, oh, okay, this is a contrived problem. I know some people like, well, 
pretty much all competition problems are contrived. What do you think? I mean, the result needs to be nice. There is a trick, okay? That's what, what is so special about these problems. They're not just, you know, uh, random, brute force uh, ugly result problems. So there's something nice about these. So here's what it is. We have 6x plus 7. Good. That is a linear expression. And then we have 3x plus 4. I'm thinking if I double the 3x plus 4, I get 6x plus 8. What would happen if I double this, right? Um, what, what is the big deal? Well, if I double this, I get 6x plus 8, which is just 1 more than this. Hmm. That's interesting, don't you think? I mean, if I use substitution, that would make a lot of sense. But I also need to take care of x plus 1. And that could be easily done because if you multiply by 6, you're going to get 6x plus 6, and that'll do the trick. So what's the trick? The trick is to multiply by 2 and multiply by 6. In other words, multiply both sides by 12. Make sense? Okay, I hope it does. So we're going to multiply 6x plus 7 squared by 2 times this and 6 times this. So in essence, I multiply both sides by 12. 6 times 12 is 72. Awesome. Now here comes the nice part. This is 6x plus 7 squared. This is 6x plus 8. And this is 6x plus 6. Now we're going to make it nicer, don't worry. Because what happens is 6x plus 6 and 6x plus 7 and 6x plus 8 are all consecutive. Don't you think? They are consecutive. So if I call the one in the middle, which is this one, if I call that t, this is going to be t plus 1, and this is going to be t minus 1. And that's going to be awesome because I'm getting difference of two squares. That's going to be even better. So here's what I get from here by way of substitution. So the whole motivation behind multiplying both sides by 12 is to use substitution with the 6x plus something. Okay? So now we get the following. t squared multiplied by t plus 1 times t minus 1. This becomes t squared minus 1 from difference of two squares or dots. In other words, equals 72. And if you multiply, you get t to the fourth. But let's go ahead and use substitution one more time because substitution is awesome. Now let's call this z. And you get z times z minus 1 is equal to 72. At this point, you can kind of guess because this is easy. Think about the product of two consecutive numbers is 72. Those numbers must be 8 and 9. This is the larger one, right? z is larger than z minus 1 by 1. So if this is 9, this must be 8, which means z is equal to 9. But it also works with the the switch and negate property, and I just invented it, negative 8 and negative 9 because their product is also 72 and they're also 1 apart. Make sense? So these are the possible z values, but what is z? z is t squared. So t squared is either 9 or t squared is equal to 8. I mean negative 8. From here we get t equals 2 root 2i and negative 2 root 2i. So that, that's going to give us complex solutions. Let's forget about those for now. t equals 3 and t equals negative 3 are going to be the real solutions. But what is t? t is 6x plus 7. Awesome. Let's go ahead and plug it in. 6x plus 7 is equal to t, which is 3. From here, 6x becomes negative 4. Uh, negative 4 over 6, which is negative 2 thirds. That's one of the solutions. And the other one is just going to be negative 3. And 6x equals negative 10, x is equal to negative 5 over 3. So we get rational solutions that would be definitely hard to check. If you go with plus minus 2 root 2, i, let's see what happens. Plus minus 2 root 2, i. We're going to subtract 7 from both sides. That's going to add negative 7, in other words. And then we're going to get our complex solutions from here with a conjugate pair. And that's going to be the complex solutions. Make sense? Okay, great. So that's pretty much uh, what we get from here. And those are all the solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.